musicians in bars getting beer. I got the mayor of the beach. Tony! How the heck are you? What's going on? Tell us about it. Well, this is my neighborhood, so I don't run it, but I certainly enjoy it. You're the mayor of the beach, man. I knew that when we had the peppery cat going. Well, you talked me into running the jams there when they switched it over to the uh, beach house. You don't have to do that. No, but you did. You talked me into it. And I, ended I up talk a lot of people into things that I can't do myself. Well, I ended up doing a year of that, and that, that ended up trans, uh, transforming into the Salty Dog Jam, and then the Duke Jam, and it spun off into a lot of other really cool you things. Hey, look at that. The mayor of the beach. Carmen, the, you're on YouTube. Oh, perfect. She's my favorite masseuse. Yeah, well, oh, really? I dancing. Where do you do your thing? Do you want to get a promotion in for your place? Uh, sure, Beauty and no. yeah. Boardwalk Beauty, Queen and Lee, in my home studio. Facial Reiki Massage. Woo there you go. See, he's the mayor of the beach. We're doing promos. Domino Show Band. So what ends up happening? That's what he says. <laughs> yeah, they were a good band. Isn't it out of your street? No, not not this one. They hired oh. me to go up there. Okay. So Al Sarah was the bass player. So Al they hired Sarah. they hired me sight unseen because he goes I, I played with them. Well, we want to bring them up and, and, and audition them at like at a, uh, one of our rehearsals or something. Oh, they couldn't Al get it seven. together. And Al goes, you know what? He's got my stamp of approval. They go, all right, he's in. Here's the list. So I went and played a gig with them, right? And then I'm in the band. Well, so at one point, they got nothing booked for like whatever the day, like say August 2nd or something. So I book a gig uh, with my uh, my buddy, Mr. Mad, who's a Rolling Stones guy, because Neil can't play with him. He's busy. He's double booked. So I booked the gig. Now my band calls me up and they go, hey, we got a gig on August 2nd. We need you to play. And I go, I can't. I'm playing with Mr. Mad. And they go, well, you gotta cancel it. And I go, I'm not canceling it. If I cancel on them, I cancel on you, right? So I said, I told them I'd play, I'm gonna play. So a couple of days go by, I get a call from Neil. He goes, yeah, my gig got canceled. So apparently I'm playing with Domino on Saturday. You wanna switch gigs? And I went, no. He goes, why not? I go, cause you're getting 60 bucks and I'm getting 120. He's like, you, <laughs> you can edit that for, for, for us. He's like, son of a bitch. And I go, whatever. I said, unless you want to give me the 120. But he goes, no, we'll just do our gigs. <laughs> but I know Neil from way back. We used to jam. Yes, sir. Neil, he's not playing this year. He's not here. Oh, no, really? Not in this year. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, so that was my, that was my Neil uh, story. In the Woodstock movie, a guy in a suit from England comes up to the kids on acid in the mud. And he says, why is music the great communicator? Who was that guy? I don't know. I don't know who that guy is. He's in the movie though. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't know who the guy is. Just answer the question. Yeah, why is music such a good communicator? Yeah. Because it's an international language and you don't have to speak words. Like I've gone to places like Cuba and watched the band and talked to the guys and they're like, hey, and Tony, puede cantar a Hotel California. And I go, what? And they go, Hotel California. I go, Hotel California. Oh, Hotel yeah, California? Yeah, yeah. And they go, see, that's what I said. I'm like, sure. Why so yeah. they've got a, a, a Spanish guitar, they got congas, and they got like uh, maracas or an afuji or something. And they're doing Hotel California, just like the intro that the Eagles did live, right? The Spanish version. They hey, want to get some free beer? Isn't it free? Oh, it's calm. It is free. I swear it's free. Well, yeah, so then they're like, Otra canción. I go, okay, sure. And they're like, I go, what song? 
Oh, they do. Uh, they go, oh, uh, no, 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 Hendor. I go, what? No, 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 Hendor. I go, I go, fuck. What is that one? They can. And they go, they're Bob Dylan. They're Guns N' Roses. They're, no, no, no. I go, knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. And they oh, go, my God. Esto. So oh. I sang the entire song with a Spanish band playing it all oh my like in a Spanish, like a, a salsa kind of a style, right? That's a good one. But I ended up hiring these fuckers to do a private party when I was down there because I thought, like, like they're just not making any money. I passed the hat around, got them 40 bucks American. And then... You don't want to get on YouTube, do you? No. Keep going, Tony. I think you have to put something in the... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like the green hat. <laughs> so it's not, yeah, it's not musicians in bars getting beer, but there is Hog Valley Brewing Company. So, oh, so we are kind of sponsored by the free beer. I bet you thought it wasn't worth it. I put it on my optimum card, bro. Green hand there somewhere. Thank you. Green hand. Well, yeah, so what ended up happening, Bill, is that no one was passed around a tip jar for these. And they're like, yeah. what can I you Just give it to me. So I went around. I got them about 40 bucks American for tips. <laughs> just at a little cafe. <laughs> so what ends up happening is I said, listen, I want to have a private party at my friend's house on Thursday. Can you guys play? I'll put 20 bucks in your tip jar. The Spanish the guys? Yeah, the Cubans. And I said, plus, I'll pass the jar around. And they go, yeah, we'll do it. So I went back to all the people who donated. So here's the funny part. I'm going to stop for a second. They all got invited to the party. Well, there's two guys. There's a great big biker looking guy from Canada and this redheaded guy sitting there. And when I went around with the hat, they went, well, what did you throw in? I go, five bucks, America. They go, I'll do that. So he throws five. His buddy throws five. The next guy's a Dutch or something. They throw it in. I get these German guys. And I go to pass the hat, and they do one of these. You know these guys when the tip jar comes around? Yeah, yeah. Like this? They're spending cash they're money to buy beer, it. so they got money, but they don't want to pay. I'm like, that's fine. I go around, get them 40 bucks. So now, when the guy said they're going to play my, my private party, I walk around. I go, hey, Ken, we're doing a private party at a house. He goes, you have a house here? And I go, no, no, but uh, I got friends, and the band's going to play. We're doing it on Thursday. You want to go? He goes, yeah, fuck, tell me where it is. So I tell him. The Dutch guy's the same thing. This is me walking up to the Germans. I walk up. They look at me because they're going, they hear about this party. And I look at them and I go, huh, fucking walk away. Oh. Go to the next people. And I go, hey, you want to go to a party on Thursday, private party? And I invited everyone in the bar except the two asshole German guys who wouldn't tip. <laughs> wouldn't even throw like five bucks in there. And we had the best time. They go, what do you want me to bring? I go, bring what you're drinking. And if you got like, you know, the little shampoos and the soaps or T-shirts and things, for the family, and they brought bags of stuff for oh, these it's guys. Not nice. We had such a good time. And again, they're like, Tony, Tony, get a cantar Hotel de California? And now I know Hotel de California. And no, 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 Hendor. I got it all figured out. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no problem. You want to play guitar? And they go, no, no, solo canta. I'm like, well, that's a bit of an insult. You don't want me. <laughs> oh. No, but I was just being funny. Oh, that's fun. And I speak Spanish, so they're like, they're just laughing. No, oh, no, Tony, so solo canta, canta, okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I know two phrases. Uno más cerveza, por favor. And donde esta salo baño? Yeah, that's usually after you've said una más cerveza a couple of times. Yeah. You're like, you, you need the baño at that yeah, point. Yeah, you, you need both of those. I'm fluent. I had a, a Colombian girlfriend for a year. That's nice. So it that only helps. took you a year? No, I took courses and stuff. I took night school courses. I went back to high school, did grade 10, 11, and 12. Let's go back to music, Tony. Yes. So, uh, yeah, but the music is the international language. That was where this well, started. Well, I got the answer there. That's a good one. Yeah. Now, uh, so what else have you, uh, your influences and the people that you played with in Toronto, or the best places that you played, that sort of thing? I got, well, I got pushed into the Beatles thing, as you know. So now I'm like the Beatles guy. I play in Liverpool. Um, in August, I'm going to Liverpool for the International Beatles Week. Awesome. And I've been hired to play in a Jerry Lee Lewis tribute band, awesome. reproducing the 1963 Jerry Lee Lewis show at the Hamburg Star Club That's in great. Hamburg. Awesome. So, so. Yeah, they were just sure. doing Tainted Love, a rocked up version. I was saying to Bill, in my dance Beatles band, we do a rocked up version of Eleanor Rigby. So we come out of Day Tripper, so it's dunk, 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 dunk. And we started an Eleanor Rigby, but with the drums and the bass just pounding away still. Very cool. People hear it and they're like, dude, that was a fucking cool version. I've never heard it done like that. Now I have heard it done kind of like that, but a thrash metal band. And it was, it was pretty heavy. It, 
you couldn't really hear all the stuff in it. You can see where, where they got it from, but it just, like, it, it kind of hurt the ears, you know? Yeah. So, but yeah, so, uh, I got the dance so Beatles going good. again now. Did you now. say Hamburg and Liverpool? No, uh, the, we're, the show we're doing, we do, the Saturday we're doing a, a, a show at the Cavern Club, and oh, then the on Cavern. Sunday we're doing the convention center. But what they asked for, because it's the Beatles convention, they said, look, this guy, Mike Byrne, is a Jerry Lee Lewis impersonator, and he has a band called Mike Byrne and the Sun Rockers that do the old oh, retro yeah, yeah. 50s yeah. stuff. Right. But he's an older guy, he's got the feet up on the piano playing the solos, just like Jerry Lee. And he said, Tony, listen, man, I can't do the Beatles thing this year with you, but why don't you come over and be my guitar player for my Jerry Lee Lewis trip? And I go, for the Beatles festival? He said, yeah, because he did a show, April of 1963, at the Hamburg Star Club. And that was just after the Beatles did their final show. So they don't want it to be all Beatles all the time, because people, you know, are like, we need a little change, you know? A little Jerry Lee. So he says, I want you to be my guitar player for my Jerry Lee tribute with the Hamburg Club. So I'm like, I got, I want, yeah, I'll get my Spotify playlist, listen to the live recording, so we do it exactly the way they did it. And uh, that's what I'm doing, August 19th, I head to England. Wow. And uh, Glasgow, and then we're gonna do all the. I've never been there, so we're gonna do Loch Ness, Loch Lomond, nice. some of the tours up there to see all the other uh, breweries up there, and uh, and the distilleries. So that'll be fun. So we're gone for about three weeks in total. Awesome. And okay. on August 10th, my Dance Beatles are doing their uh, their first gig with the new bass player, oh. a guy called Peter Peter Guy. What happened on the Jeff Call thing? Um. Jeff is What's always he, guy? He, he's always busy with some different bands, and oh, yeah. he, he has to prioritize the bands that play the soft cedar gig. So he does yeah. auditoriums, and oh, it's like two fifty a night or something. But the problem is, if he gets one of those gigs, he has to cancel our gig, yeah. and it makes it difficult for us to book anything. So, right. so you we just, just parted ways and on. said, "Well, go go about your Green River project and stuff." Oh, it's Green we'll, River. Yeah, that's a yeah. good band. And we'll get we'll get another guy. So this guy this guy called Peter Guy is actually in a Rush tribute band that plays like like once a month or twice a month during the summer and then once a month during the winter. And he's an IATSE guy, works in the movie industry and that, we got oh, a lot okay. in common. So he's a really good singer. Yeah, you've been singer. doing some of that lately, eh? Well, yeah. But then he, like, he loves the Beatles, but he's been typecast as the Rush guy because oh. he had a Rush band. And he's like, dude. What band? What Rush band? Oh, fuck, what are they called? Oh, come on, you're on the spot now. Oh, oh, he told me too. No, I can't remember offhand. I'm on the spot because you're hurting my brain. So, next time, but anyways, next he's time. got that and a classic rock band he plays in. But he goes, I love the Beatles. I've always wanted to play it. Yeah. So he came to see us when we did a gig at the uh, at the hideout upstairs in the Blue Room. And uh, we had uh, we had Jamie Valentine and Linda Carr were subbing in for me while we were looking for like a full-time bass player. And he loved the band. He goes, I'd love to be the bass player for that band. That's great. So now he's joined us. And our first gig is at the new venue called the, the Junction Temple at Annette Street. Oh. It's, it's an old Masonic temple. Oh. And my buddy's Junction? Yeah, Richard Henry and Cat Neal. Um, they've opened it up. Cat's doing most of the bookings. Richard does all the technical stuff. They have full backline, all the amps, lights, sound system. And apparently we're gonna be the first rock band uh, basically to do like a big like a proper show and that's on August the tenth. The uh, junction has a great music scene. Yeah, it's just it's a little and far art. for me to go from here. Some great spots. That one was like, like it's, I forget what the, the bar is called, but it's the address, like 22, 25 Dundas or something. I've been to see the Liverpool guys there doing the Beatles show. Oh my God, great venue, you know. And so yeah. where, where in the beach do you like to play? 